Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 19th of May. Prime Minister Modi undertakes aerial survey of cyclone-affected areas in Western India. US envoy Khalil Zad says fear of Taliban conquering Kabul overblown. And Nepal confirms presence of third and new variant of coronavirus. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday undertook an aerial survey of affected areas in Gujarat state and adjoining Union territory of due to assess the devastation caused by Cyclone Tote. Driving waves of up to 25 feet on the high seas, Cyclone Tote ramped into the western states of Maharashtra and Gujarat over the past two days, killing at least 61 people and leaving a trail of destruction, authorities said. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday conducted an aerial survey of the Cyclone Taute affected areas of Gujarat and Diu and took stock of the situation. He landed in Bhavnagar from where he conducted an aerial survey of Una, Diu, Jafrabad and Mahuwa two days after Cyclone Taute made landfall in the Saurashtra region. After the survey, the Prime Minister also held a review meeting. Driving waves of up to 25 feet on the high seas, Cyclone Taute rammed into the western states of Maharashtra, of which Mumbai is the capital, and Gujarat over the past two days, killing at least 61 people and leaving a trail of destruction, authorities said. Indian naval ship Kochi that was sent for rescue operations off Mumbai coast for those stranded in Arabian Sea during the cyclone brought back 185 people of the barge P-305 on Wednesday. The rescue operations were still underway with Indian Navy's ships and aircraft scoring waters off the financial capital Mumbai for 77 workers missing from a barge that sank after the powerful cyclone barreled into the country's west coast this week. If you say, my Papa 305 rescued ho chuke hain, abhi ki agar hum filhal baat kare hain, aur do aur jo hain, ek varapradha dusri hai, aapko yeh bhi jaan, yeh jo aapko jaan kar ke khushi hoogi, ki humare ships ne, humare command ne, hum logo ne mil kar ke aisa coordinate kiya, and we have been able to avert another about 300 more uh, lives at sea. Meanwhile, Indian capital New Delhi and its adjoining areas received rainfall on Wednesday under the impact of the cyclone Taute, which has now moved north northeastwards across Rajasthan to west Uttar Pradesh. This comes as India battles with the second wave of the deadly COVID-19. On Wednesday, India recorded its highest single-day toll of 4,529 COVID deaths. 267,334 new cases of coronavirus in the last 24 hours, taking the total cases tally in the country to over 25 million. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's port city Karachi was hit by gusty winds and a dust storm on Tuesday under the influence of Cyclone Totti in the region, which left four people dead. A powerful dust storm followed by rain hit parts of Karachi on Tuesday evening under the influence of Cyclone Taukte in southern Pakistan, weather officials said. At least four people were killed in roof collapse incidents when strong winds triggered by the dust storm slammed into the city, according to local media reports. Residents, however, welcomed the change in weather conditions after a severe heat spell that had gripped the city for two days. दो दिन से जो बारिश है सक गर्मी और हब्स का माहौल था शहर है कराची के अंदर उसके अंदर हम ताजिर बरादरी के कारोबार खुलने के बाद से सक परेशान थे कि कोई जिस तरह का मौसम था गर्मी का दर्जा रात 44 डिग्री आपने देखा कराची जो है बर्दाश्त है भारत हम लोग कराची के लोग इस तरह के माहौल के इस गर्मी की आदि नहीं 
अल्लाह का बड़ा शुक्र हो गया बारिश रहमत बन गई लेकिन साथ साथ ये जहमत भी बनती हुई नजर आ रही है जिस तरह से हवा के अंदर ये गुर्दो गर्दो गुबार मौजूद है Karachi has been in the grip of a severe heat wave since few days with temperatures soaring up to 44 degrees Celsius. More news from Pakistan. Pakistan's opposition PMLN party president Shahbaz Sharif has accused Prime Minister Imran Khan's government of being involved in a number of scandals and responsible for the destruction of the country. The opposition party also blamed Prime Minister Khan of using his influence to tamper the records in alleged cases of scam. President of PMLN Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz Party Shehbaz Sharif on Tuesday accused Prime Minister Imran Khan's government of being involved in a number of scandals and said that the inept ministers of the ruling PTI government are responsible for the destruction of the country. Shehbaz Sharif who is the opposition leader in the National Assembly stated that it was PMLN behind controlling inflation and load shedding during its tenure the present government is mingled in a number of scandals he said according to local media reports PMLN spokesperson Maryam Aurangzeb also accused PM Khan of using his influence to tamper the record in the alleged scams and several other cases Ho rahi hai tampering 122 Arab ki LNG के जो चोरी है उसमें इमरान खान टेम्परिंग कर रहे हैं हो रही है टेम्परिंग 500 अरब की चीनी में हो रही है टेम्परिंग 500 अरब की दवाई चोरी हो गई मीन वाइल ऑन वेंसडे द लाहौर हाई कोर्ट इशूड नोटिस टू दी फेडरल गवर्नमेंट सीकिंग रिप्लाई बाई मे ट्वेंटी सिक्स ऑन अ पिटिशन अगेंस्ट नॉट अलाउिंग शहबाज शरीफ टू ट्रेवल एब्रॉड ऑन मेडिकल ग्राउंड डिस्पाइट दी कोर्ट अर्लियर ऑर्डर्स ऑन मंडे दी गवर्नमेंट हैड एडेड शहबाज शरीफ नेम who is on a bail in a case pertaining to assets beyond means to a no fly list moving on us special envoy zalme khalilzad said on tuesday that predictions that the taliban will overrun afghan government forces and conquer kabul after foreign forces withdrawal are overblown meanwhile top us general mark milley said us and its nato allies are exploring a possible international effort to help secure the airport in afghan capital to maintain diplomatic presence even after the drawdown us special envoy for afghanistan reconciliation zalme khalilzad said on tuesday that predictions that the taliban will quickly overrun afghan government forces and conquer kabul once us and coalition forces are fully withdrawn are unduly pessimistic Khalilzad made the remarks during a meeting of the House Foreign Affairs Committee whose members expressed deep worry that President Joe Biden's decision to fully withdraw by September will lead to chaos and intensified civil war in Afghanistan. Khalilzad argued that the Taliban have reason not to push for a military victory and instead pursue a negotiated political settlement that could give them international legitimacy and removal from certain American and UN sanctions. I personally believe I personally believe that the uh, the, uh, the statements that the forces will disintegrate uh, and the talibs will take over in short order are mistaken the real choices that uh, the uh, afghans will face is between a long war and a negotiated settlement Meanwhile top US general Mark Milley said on Tuesday that the United States and its NATO allies are exploring a possible international effort to help secure the airport in Afghanistan's capital Kabul after American troops withdraw from the country. Milley said the move is one of the key to maintaining a diplomatic presence. He however declined to speculate about the size of any international force at the airport. In news from Nepal Nepal is the worst affected country in South Asia after India with the second wave of the coronavirus pandemic wreaking havoc in the Himalayan nation. After confirming two variants of coronavirus, Nepal's health ministry has now confirmed that there were cases of third variant B16172 in the country. After confirming two variants of coronavirus, Nepal on Tuesday confirmed that there were cases of third variant B16172 in the country. 
Nepal's Ministry of Health and Population said three variants of the virus have been detected. According to Dr. Samir Kumar Adhikari, Assistant Spokesperson for the Ministry, B1617-2 is the new variant seen in India, while B1617-1 is the one seen in the UK. Earlier last year, Nepal reported the variant arising from China. With this, three variants of the virus have been detected, Adhikari added in a release. The ministry also urged people to strictly abide by the public health protocols as the new variant is more infectious than the older ones and even deadlier for the people of all age groups. Healthcare workers in Nepal's capital Kathmandu have been grappling to contain the rapid rise of COVID-19 cases as the country is facing shortage of beds, medical supplies and oxygen as the new wave of coronavirus infections has spilled across the Indian border into the country. Nepal's total count of COVID-19 cases stands at 472,354, including 352,414 recoveries and 5,411 deaths. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka's Supreme Court has determined that some clauses in the China-backed Port City Economic Commission bill, which is opposed by the opposition, are inconsistent with the country's constitution. However, the top court added that these clauses can be made valid if amended. The developments were announced in the parliament by the speaker on Tuesday. Speaker Mahinda Yapa Abhivardhana told Sri Lankan parliament on Tuesday that the Supreme Court had determined that certain provisions of the Port City Economic Commission bill are inconsistent with the constitution and directed that those clauses required to be passed by a special majority and a referendum as they were unconstitutional. The decision of the top court was handed over to the speaker recently after considering 19 petitions filed against the proposed bill. The Port City bill was tabled in the parliament on April 8, after which 19 petitions were filed in the Supreme Court. Following the Apex Court's verdict on these petitions, a parliament debate will be held on May 19 and 20. The Port City Colombo is a joint venture between Sri Lanka and China. The bill seeks to establish a special commission that will govern the city as a special economic zone. The 1.4 billion US dollars Colombo Port City project is slated to be the single largest private sector development in Sri Lanka amid concerns about China seeking to increase its footprint in the country through contentious infrastructure projects. Sri Lanka has already leased Hambantota Port to the Chinese state-run company for a period of 99 years, a move that has caused concern in neighbouring India. The head of the UN Refugee Agency said on Tuesday more international support was needed for thousands of Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh during a donor conference aiming to raise almost 1 billion US dollar to fund the response. Donors have so far placed 340 million dollars to support humanitarian work in both the Rohingya camps and local Bangladeshi communities. The head of the UN Refugee Agency said on Tuesday more international support was needed for hundreds of thousands of Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh during a donor conference aiming to raise almost $1 billion to fund the response. Close to a million Rohingya have been living in crowded camps in southern Bangladesh that comprise the world's largest refugee settlement since fleeing a military crackdown in Myanmar nearly four years ago. UNHCR launched an appeal for $943 million to support humanitarian work in both the Rohingya camps and local Bangladeshi communities. This, this is an appeal worth $943 million and we do need contributions. It's 134 partners uh, appealing for this uh, amount of uh, money. It seems a lot. It's really $2 per refugee um, per, per day. So it's, um, it's, not an out, you know, it's not an enormous, an enormous amount of money. The founder of NGO Friendship, Runa Khan, said the fate of the Rohingya was at risk of being forgotten in the wake of a coup by the army in Myanmar that has thrown the country into further turmoil and sent more people fleeing to the borders since February 1. 
Later in the day, the UN refugee chief told a news conference that donors had so far pledged $340 million for the 2021 program, meaning it is currently 36% funded. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.